Um, I wanted to start off to ask you to explain to people, in layman's terms, fairly mm. simply, what is HIV stroke AIDS? We were all talking this morning saying when we were in our 20s, we talked about it a lot. There was a lot of advertising, mm. a lot of campaigns, <coughs> information, and that seems to have, have gone away. Um, so just tell people what it is. It's a really good point, actually. We do forget we talk about HIV and we never explain what it is. Mm. So very simply, HIV is a virus that gradually, over time, weakens the immune system so that you become prone to infections that normally your body would be able to fight. And at a certain level of weakness, when your immunity is really not working, you're getting certain infections, we call that AIDS. In fact, we call that less often now. It's sort of mm. end-stage HIV as a sort of less aggressive way of defining yeah. it. But it's as simple as that. It's a virus. You catch it through sex. You catch it through body fluids. So sex really is the most common one. But um, sharing needles, sometimes through childbirth, mother passing it on to baby. But mm. the great thing is these days, very, very good treatments, and you can stop most of those ways of transmitting HIV. Well, we um, it's World AIDS Day tomorrow, which is another reason we're discussing this. And last week was National HIV Testing Week, mm. and we're going to be testing two of the panel in a moment. I mean, again, we were saying this morning when we talked about HIV and AIDS, it was like a death sentence. People mm. were terrified of it. What's the situation now with medication? I mean, it is... I can't think of another infection, another condition that we have made such extraordinary advances in that science has done. I shouldn't say we. It was nothing to do with me. It was the brilliant people in laboratories working very hard doing this. Um, because, yes, a lot of people died very quickly from HIV in the 80s when we first saw it. Nowadays, very, very few people die from HIV. And you're in infected now and diagnosed now, you can expect to live an entirely normal life expectancy. That's a profound thing to be able to say, I think. And um, the other thing which surprised us is that um, in the last 10 years, the number of British-born women living with HIV <coughs> has risen by 42%. And it says, with women over 50, make up the fastest growing group. This is very sad to me because any infection is sad, but particularly I think there's a whole cohort of women who maybe have been in relationships for a long time. Those relationships come to an end and they're back out in the hideous world of dating oh. again. I know you were talking about romance before, but, you know, it can be a bit brutal. But they've often missed out on good sex education. And so they're a little bit naive. And also, we've targeted specific groups like gay men or sub-Saharan African men and things like that, yeah. men and women. But they've missed out, so they just think, it's not going to be me. And then it is, and then it's a real blow because they don't know how to handle it. But They've what had sort no of education. numbers are we talking about here? Because I know you're saying it's gone up, mm. but is that actually because it was so low that any trajectory upwards? Probably, pops yeah, we're up not on the talking statistics. big numbers, but to yeah. me, one more person infected mm. is one person too many. Still, each and every time it happens, something incredible I want to tell you is that if you are diagnosed and put on treatment. You, and the treatment is working well, you are potentially no longer infectious. Mm -hmm. Now, that means we could potentially stop any more new HIV infections. It is possible.